If you've ever put on a virtual reality headset, then you already know it's the most immersive way to experience a digital environment. But if you've never worn a virtual reality headset before, it's difficult to explain exactly how immersive it is. So in an attempt to illustrate to you exactly how realistic this whole experience can feel, I put on a chest strap heart rate monitor. So we can watch my heart rate spike and fall just like it might in real life or under duress. And we can get a better idea of what the human brain does when it experiences virtual reality. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel and you happen to stumble across this video by dumb luck or otherwise, and you're a veteran, a service member, a tactics or doctrine enthusiast, or just a lover of tactical games. Well, welcome home. We're glad to have you and thank you for subscribing. I'm Controlled Pairs and I play the most immersive tactical shooters and combat sims in the world. This is Onward version 1.7 with a heart rate monitor. Alright, so if they're all the way in the southwest corner, there's like two avenues of approach to the southwest To start off our adventure today, I think it's good that we kind of baseline our expectations. And so what we've got here is me just issuing some instructions to my friends before we get started in a player versus player match. We can see my heart rate is relatively steady between 70 and 80 beats per minute. This is just me standing in my bedroom, not moving around a whole lot, just having a casual conversation, excited for what's to come, but not yet fully experiencing the stress that virtual reality can cause. And to kind of get a better understanding of, you know, what my average metrics might be like, I think it's important to understand kind of like my baseline level of fitness. And so to try to illustrate that, I went on a five mile run just the other day and, uh, and I recorded my heart rate the entire time, which is, you know, why I own this heart rate monitor so I can use it for physical training. And, uh, and this is my five mile run heart rate stats. So in a 38 minute run, averaging just under an eight minute mile, kind of just cruising, my heart rate was around 146 beats per minute, but it did get up to 178 beats per minute. That's kind of working through some hills and then turning up the speed a little bit closer towards the end of my run, but experiencing a pretty good amount of, uh, of stress there towards the end. And then just to get a better understanding of my general fitness, my, uh, my VO2 max, VO2 max is essentially a measure of how well your body can metabolize oxygen and use that oxygen as fuel to continue doing exercise. And uh, without going into the science of it, my VO2 max is right around 50, which uh, places me in the top 15% for my age and gender. Guys, this is only because I have a basic fitness regimen. I promise I'm not like a superhuman or anything like that, but I'm just trying to demonstrate that my general fitness is reasonably high. Let's see what happens when things start getting weird. Guys, remember this is player versus player, so I'm really excited to be facing my friends in this kind of adversarial PvP combat. And just as we start to move and to plan and to sneak, you can see my heart rate immediately elevate up to 80 beats per minute. And it doesn't start going back so down I, uh, until we stop at the top of the mountain and have a quick conversation. From low ground to the front right. Of the nearest At building. this point, I thought I had seen one of our adversaries up here to the buildings to our front. I kind of suspected what building that they were in, and we had actually heard one shot be fired. And so uh, we were sneaking really, really carefully, but we hadn't even made contact yet. My heart rate gets up to 85, and then shortly thereafter climbs up to 100 beats per minute as I've tucked into this piece of cover. But I suspect that contact is imminent and my brain convinces my heart to beat faster, to deliver more oxygen, that it's under stress, that my body's gonna need to perform. Stack on me. And then as soon as we start taking fire, watch what happens. <laughs> my buddy gets tagged right behind us. It takes a second for my body to react. I'm trying to figure out where the enemy's at. My heart rate's still right in the mid 90s. And my body starts to react as the blood starts pumping faster. But sure enough, after my body catches up to what my brain is experiencing, my heart rate quickly gets over 100 beats per minute as it's experiencing that stress. Still alive. And again, that's just my body's stress reaction. It's my body trying to deliver oxygen and blood to my, my brain and to my limbs so that I can perform at a higher level. Here, my buddy's wounded behind me. I know that I'm about to make a move. So I haven't done anything yet. I haven't started running, but my heart rate is spiking because I know I'm gonna throw this grenade and take off running. So my brain is already excited about what action comes next.
stride goes out, and I sprint. Heart rate's all the way up to 120. It's not quite the same average rate as like when I go for a run, but considering I'm just standing in my bedroom, it's kind of impressive how much that heart rate can spike. Now here's the real interesting thing. We're up at a 125, 126, 127. But I get caught here. I never actually get the chance to face my enemy. Instead, I get shot. But when I do, watch how quickly my body recovers. As soon as my brain knows that I'm no longer in danger, my heart rate starts to plummet. So we get all the way up to 130 at the moment that I get shot. And then just watch oh, yeah, it fall fine. off. I was trying to I was gonna go back and try to get you up, but all of that stress hormone that. leaves <laughs> and my heart rate just plummets. It's pretty amazing how quickly your brain can convince the rest of your body it's okay to calm down and to reset. We were almost in a zone three. And all of a sudden we're back into the mid nineties where it all started. Pretty crazy. You ever ask yourself whether or not suppression in video games is effective? Well, I'm about to answer that question for you. We switched sides in this next round. My team was defending, and I was in the upper level of this target structure. And Abu, who's on the other team, decides to suppress my building. I don't know if he knew which window I was in, if he got a glimpse of me, but just watch my heart rate here. It's right around 90 where we expect it to be just standing and talking. And then watch what happens when I start getting suppressed. Again, it takes a second for my body to start reacting to the sudden surprise of becoming suppressed, but sure enough, in just a few seconds, it's up 10 beats per minute. We're easily over 100 and up 15 beats per minute. We already know that with that elevated heart rate, it's going to affect the way that I perform, right? My body's trying to pump that blood and oxygen to the rest of my body, my brain, my extremities, and it's doing so so effectively that my heart rate gets all the way up to nearly 130 beats per minute as we uh, get ready to counterattack here and and go and fight Abu. I'm up over 130 beats per minute. Again, I've already convinced my body I'm about to make a move, so it's preparing to make that move. I've already made the decision in my head. I just need to go and execute it. Heart rate stays elevated. All the way up to 140 guys 140 remember we're getting into the average heart rate range of my five mile run now throw the grenade i see my enemy we're up over 150 now we're in a zone four that's ridiculous trade for the win heart rate hits 160 and sure enough just moments later we see that heart rate plummet trading again. for the pretty win. ridiculous how effective this thing is So this whole experience begs the question, like clearly just by looking at my biological reaction to this digital stimulus and my heart rate rising and falling with the experiences that we're seeing, we can see that it's immersive enough to trick my brain into thinking that it's at least partially real. But then it begs the question, can an experience like that be copy and pasted into a training environment? Well, of course it can. And what you're seeing here with this elevated heart rate can also be trained on the gun range. If you're going to do something like a stress shoot where you put your body through a series of physical extraneous activities and then you go to the range and you try to fire a course of fire accurately, you measure time, and you measure marksmanship, you're trying to achieve the, the same sort of result. And an elevated heart rate and all that stress is also affecting your decision making cycle and your OODA loop. And, you know, this is proof that virtual reality is capable of doing that in a pretty meaningful and a powerful way. And I'm excited to share with you guys some other things that I've got coming up here in the near future. We're gonna do more of this stuff with the heart rate and onward we're gonna introduce um, an exciting new piece of technology that's gonna be on my secret YouTube channel next week that you guys will have to go over there and check out. And we're also gonna compare all of that to uh, wearing a heart rate monitor at the range and doing some stress shoot style stuff at the range over on the other YouTube channel. So thanks so much for watching this one. Remember if you did enjoy it and you like other stuff like this, you want to see more tactical shooters, more combat simulation, more doctrine, more tactics, uh, and anything like this, then you've definitely found the right spot. And I appreciate 
that you guys have subscribed. I'm Controlled Pairs. I play the most immersive tactical shooters and combat sims in the world. This is Onward.